Hello, it's me again. I'm back with uh, another video and an even stranger camera angle. I'm trying to doubt some stuff here. Uh, I've just been thinking deep thoughts today as I hang out in the library and I'm still kind of... I don't know, I, I feel like I sit down and I start to feel warm, like I'm feverish, but then I, I'm not sneezing or up or anything. Anyway, I was just thinking about uh, years ago when I was a normal person, I had this job where I worked for a, I was an assistant for Dr. Fred Davis, an MIT professor who was working at North, oh, what was it, University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. And I, I got that job because I was trying to interview just to work in an office there, but I guess he liked the cut of my jib, so he offered me just a job as personally assistant, like go find uh, research materials and look up stuff, basically kind of be a informal gopher. And I remember the, the office ladies there hated my guts because <laughs> I had kind of had this quasi official job. That was fun. I only got to do it for a year. He was basically paying me out of his own um, money, or not his own money, but I mean the money of his grants or whatever they were. And I guess there was only enough there to pay me. Anyway, um, I, I learned a lot of interesting stuff there. And his main thing was how technology is adapted as it comes along. Because when something is invented new or something new comes along, it isn't always... It takes a while for it to get applied in the way we're now um, familiar with it. Um, a lot of things, like aviation was that way. I myself, and this is one thing I talked to him about, probably one of the ways that I was able to schmooze myself into that cool job. But those are my glory days. Um, I lived in this house when I was young. I was a kid. And it was an old, old house. It was built in like 1918 or 1920. And the sink was a basin, like the little porcelain basin. And there was a spigot for the hot and the spigot for the cold. But they came up in opposite things. Because in the old days, you would take the hot water that you put on the stove and you would pour it in, and then you'd pour some cold water. So you'd make yourself nice water, shave, whatever. Well, I guess for one reason or another, when they designed this sink, nobody, because nowadays, everything goes, you know, you turn the faucet, and you put hot water, and the water comes through the faucet. Nobody ever thought of that in those days, I guess. Or maybe they did, they didn't like it, or something. But recently, I've seen examples of technology in art. And art and aesthetics is also another one of my, what used to be one of my faves. Um, I had a whole section in my bookshelves, in my books, before everything went. There was um, aesthetics and art history. And what made me think of that was, I like to read the uh, Japanese animes, uh, not a uh, manga, the Japanese manga. And anime too and um, light novels there's been a couple of instances in there where something's portrayed I guess I'll just give an example in um, interviews with monster girls the the girls get together and they tell a ghost story and there's a ghost story about these two girls they go they they go into this horrible scary cave and they're lost in there and all they have is the feeble light of their cell phones and it's a light the way and I, I thought that just struck me because once upon a time it would have been the feeble light of their lanterns or the feeble light of their um, little light flashlights and you know the batteries could die um, and it just hit me because this was basically an update of those old I mean 20, 30 years ago no one would have known what that was another sample with the same technology is uh, another manga I recently discovered called Laid Back Camp. And it's a really it's nice of life, laid back. Uh, it's about these girls who go camping and that's it. Nothing really happens. It's just kind of laid back, relaxing. And the manga artist uh, draws very sumptuously. Very beautiful scenes. Very sumptuously drawn. Great detail. And there's a scene where uh, one girl is texting with another 
you know, texted her friend, who's in another camp. And it just struck me because she's reading, she's looking at this, and she's in darkness because she's in her little tent. And her face is illuminated by the light of her cell phone. And, you know, it, it's beautifully drawn. You know, her, her hair and her neck and the, the backpack, or not the, her um, sleeping bag is in shadow. And I thought, isn't art weird, or isn't that wonderful? Because that's something that just would not have been comprehensible 30 years ago. Who would have thought of it? I mean, uh, you know, a cell phone? What's that? A cell phone light? Having to draw somebody illuminated by cell phone light? That would just, um, would have been, well... Uh, it, but it just strikes me that, you know, that old aesthetics things I used to like to read about because it's like language, language and art. They they can adapt to things that didn't exist. And it kind of brought me back again to the information technology thing because technology is the same way. We get this new technology and it takes us a while. I got to go. There's somebody who's interested in what I'm saying. But I'll talk to you later. Hang in there. Bye.